This is the Black Poodles and Poetry Readings Podcast. You can find the rest of my poems on my Instagram page, Chokeslam Poet, or you could download my free ebook, Free Poetry for Starving Luchadors. You could get it on Nook, Kindle, Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, iBooks, and Smashwords. Adult Coloring Books She told her husband if they did adult coloring books in coffee houses, their marriage would get better. Her idea to ease the stress. What about blowjobs, he asked her. What about them, she said. And so they colored, they colored, colored, and colored. After a while, he started to date the chubby barista with the nice smile that had an allergic reaction to crayons. It was the perfect scenario because he fucking hated coloring. Nailed it. That's funny, he said of that thing I wrote. Let's write skits. I submitted my first skit even though I didn't really want to. It was going to be for some YouTube comedy show. Good exposure, I guess. He called me later that night. You all right, man? He asked after I sent it. Why? I replied. You wrote about a family man in the zombie costume that hung himself off a tree in front of his lawn on Halloween. I wanted to talk to you about that, I said. He needs to have a sign saying LOL in all caps nailed to his chest. Do you know anybody who can do that effect for us? Quiet on the phone is what I heard. You hired me, fucker. Don't judge me, I thought. It's on you. The punchline where kids get on a ladder to get the candy from his mouth? Hilarious. He didn't understand comedy as much as he let on. There you go. What happened to you, lady? Dressed so fine but got this look on your face. Things didn't quite work out the way you thought it should. Sitting at this bar, you got a thousand yard stare slicing right through Papa Bank account. Sad the way you let yourself get bought, everyone being so damn happy for you. Maybe you'd be happier with me. Dressed like dirt, making love wherever. Maybe things would be just the same. Sad thinking about what could have been. Wishing things turned out different in the days that used to be. Christ loves you on acid. He liked Jesus because mom and dad told him to. In college, a guy with a beard sporting a thick Memphis accent handed him a little blotter. This'll pop the territories, the mysterious bearded man said. What's that supposed to mean? The shit kicked in. Acid, you'd have to presume. And life went from knowing Jesus to knowing every end of the universe. The kid's world was getting turned upside down by this bearded man's blend. A heroic blend, as Terrence McKenna would say. And he ran to the bathroom for cover. The toilet kept his ass safe. Some of the best moments in life came in there, he thought. You've expelled the best shits of your days feeling like gold afterward, he thought. So why wouldn't anybody run to a toilet? Everything was a relief until he turned his head. In the stall was a drawing of Christ, and the more he stared at it, the bigger it got. It got so big that it blocked the door. Help! he yelled. Christ is destroying me. Christ asked him how he felt, and he cried. He couldn't stop crying and shitting for the rest of that trip. Las Vegas Penance The Queen Buddha came to the sick teenager and offered him one last luxury. What is it that you want? she asked the sickly boy. The boy smiled because he wanted the things his friends with girlfriends had, but better. Bring me to the nastiest, muckiest brothel this side of the hemisphere, he said. I don't care about diseases. I don't care about a reputation. I want to take on all comers, opening the place up and closing it down. Las Vegas was the place to be and that's where he went. The image of a dead body in place for his loved ones to see. Really, though, he was dancing with Candy, Mandy, Tanya, and Tisha. Lily, Alexa, Brandy, and Mifa brought him the finest cocktails. Nikki, Kiki, Sammy, and Rafika made a man of him. They all did. It was a great way to go out. Live proud, boy. It was a life most men were afraid to take on. The Sheriff's Last Hurrah The Sheriff was the toughest man in town. 
He made a living off this reputation of stopping bank robbers with his bare hands, one time clawing out a man's shoulder, or so they say. Now that the California gold rush was underway, the sheriff's job was demanding more and more of his body. That first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, sixth wave, and now 22nd wave of new travelers these last few months left him in some pummeled scraps. Today he was in another scrap, though, a more bureaucratic one with some robber barons from New York. How you doing, said the diamond executive who knew full well the sheriff's back was hurting. Fine, the sheriff simply said. You don't look fine. I'm going to cut you a deal, the executive went on in his fancy New Yorker suit. My boys take over and revamp the sheriff's department and you can sit in a fanned office all day. Give them orders. And you're going to need what from me, the sheriff said. You're going to let me run a slave compound, having whoever comes up here work free for me. We split the profits, 70-30. The sheriff answered by blasting that fat bastard in the head with his magnum. This was answered by a man blasting him in the head with an East Coast revolver. The man, turns out, was the real head of operations. And so, with the sheriff gone, the robber barons owned the West Coast and dug up every last piece of gold they could, spreading their propaganda out east to the local papers.